everyone, welcome back to my channel, Bow and Arrow Tarot. Today we're going to get right into the January love reading for the sign of Taurus. So let's get right into it, my lovely Taurus. Um, if you want to check out your 2020 outlook, the 2020 love outlook, they're both linked in the description. And I'd like to say thank you to all of you who provided uh, me with donations over the holiday period, New Year period, those of you who booked readings and tarot answers with me. I really do appreciate all of that really helps me to survive and carry on with this channel. Um, I'm not going to do a shout out on the people who gave me donations because I'd like to respect their privacy, but you guys know who you are. And I just want you all to know how much I am very thankful for that. So let's get right into it, Taurus. We are going to pull out a full Celtic spread for you. This is a love reading, right? So this is going to be a general love reading. This could be for a Taurus that is single or involved, uh, looking for love, right? Whatever the case may be, but in the area of love, we're going to check it out and see what's going on for this January period for the sign of the bull. All right, Taurus. Now, I am a Taurus rising myself, so... I do resonate with these readings. And so let's just see, all right? Show me what's going on for Taurus this January 2020 period. Show me. All right, straight out, five of pentacles covered by the high priestess. All right. Conscious is Ace of Wands. Let's move this over a little bit. And we have the Fool. Wow. It's your unconscious position. Coming in with a Two of Swords and leaving the month with a Queen of Wands. Eight of Swords and Eight of Wands. Wow. Back to back eights. So we're definitely talking about boundaries and strength. King of Swords and the Four of Swords is how you round your month off. All right, guys. So let's take a look at the bottom of the deck. Chariot. Now, this card actually fell out, and I put it at the bottom. I didn't know what the card was, but it needed to be there. So, all right, guys. Let's get right into it. Wow. Well, covered with a high priestess. That's a strong energy for you, Taurus, certainly. Um... You have Ace of Wands, Queen of Wands, two eights here. This is the energy you come into and the energy you're met with this, uh, this January. But let's get right into your center card. Center card is Five of Pentacles covered by the High Priestess. Now, this is a financial divide, isn't it? This is a power struggle. The Five of Pentacles is all about a power struggle that happens between you and another person or a group of people, right? Um, and there's a divide, there's a split. And for all intents and purposes, you're basically turned out of the group, turned out into sort of alienation, right? Out into the cold, just as you see these two characters, right? On this, on the card, turned out into the cold and oftentimes paying a financial price, having to pick yourself back up right? Because now you split from the group or you split from this particular person. So it's very much a case of sort of having to start all over again, right? And certainly having to sort of build yourself back up to where you were before financially. Now you're covered with a high priestess and that really indicates that for a lot of you, Taurus, I think you realize this has been a very spiritual uh, sort of event, right? Now the high priestess is the highest card for intuition and self-confidence, but she also has a high amount of sort of just general understanding of spiritual matters, the need, you know, how things work when we're trying to learn a spiritual lesson. And I think that you are very well aware right now, Taurus, that this particular split was necessary. Certainly with the high priestess there, I want to say for some of you, you absolutely knew that it was coming, right? Your intuition was riding high already. Um, and so you realized that this was happening, right? There we go. All right. Um, you knew this was coming. You had it in the back of your mind. I think you had an idea that the split was eventually going to happen in some way or another. And oftentimes the five of pentacles is very much a case of two steps back or five steps forward, right? Oftentimes this happens in a power dynamic where it was inevitable to happen. It was inevitable to fall apart. 
it's certainly inevitable that you would have to sort of start all over again. But most of the time, usually this is a very important move because uh, had you stayed in that particular dynamic with this individual or this group of individuals, you wouldn't have been able to progress very far. And so Five of Pentacles is very much an obstacle clearing card. Even though in the short term, it seems like it's um, rough, right? It's difficult. Um, it, is, it is kind of the necessary pain that you have to go through, the necessary hardship you have to go through to find yourself in a place where even more opportunities are available to you, even more doors open to you. Now, your conscious and unconscious. In your conscious position, you have an ace of wands and unconscious, you have to fool. And so this is what I'm talking about. Um... Although this split was difficult and probably cost a lot financially, Ace of Wands talks about you having a whole new passion now. I think you feel free. Somewhere or another, you know, somehow or another, you feel free as a result of this sort of split. And, um, and I'm going to say this split probably had to do with a love connection because this is a love reading. So we're talking about a love connection. Did it fall apart over money? Did something happen over money? Uh, you know, and so now you're like, wow, you know, you're free. You have Ace of Wands energy. So you're wanting to finally follow your passion, a new passion. Ace of Wands is also the great phallic symbol. So it could very well be that this January period, you have a high level of attraction with someone. In your unconscious position, you have the Fool. And so the Fool definitely talks about a new journey for you. I think this is definitely for you Tauruses out there who most recently broke up a relationship that was really a financial burden for you. You may have been carrying that person financially, you know, and then um, when it split off, somehow you ended up, you know, an example could be is if you're, you know, if you're with somebody and you're pouring your money into them, you know, this happens when you're with a lover or someone that's, you know, in a relationship and you may have a little bit more money than they do and you're investing in them, you know, and then their, their dreams kind of don't really work out or they take your investment, you know, and they take what they can from you financially and then you guys break up and you're the one who's left with not being paid back, not having any of that return, and now kind of suffering a little bit because you've had to spend so much on them or you've chosen to spend so much on them, right? Um, and it could also just simply be that the split in and of itself caused a financial burden. In any case, the split happened, I'm going to say for a lot of you Taurus, I would say this happened before 2020 because you're coming into 2020 with this energy. And nevertheless, this is a whole new month for love for you, Taurus, right? And I do feel for a lot of you, um, it was kind of like, you know, if this, what is this, if this is what it costs me to get rid of this relationship, perhaps, that may have been quite toxic in a lot of other ways, right? Because you usually, toxicity usually doesn't come in singles, right? It comes in pairs in a sense that, you know, there's usually not just one thing toxic about somebody. If somebody was using you for your money or they were manipulating you or trying to control you, right, through money, then there's a lot of other toxic shit that goes with that. In any case, it feels very much like you're free from a situation. And I feel very much, Taurus, that... If you're resonating with this reading, you're happy to be free. You don't necessarily mind having to uh, dust yourself back up off and pick yourself back up and really start all over again, build yourself up financially again, because the freedom from this connection feels so strong. With this fool and ace of wands, there's a happiness here and there's an exuberance and an excitement. And again, I think for a lot of you, you saw this coming and you were probably secretly wishing for this to happen in some way. Now, you do come into this month with a Two of Swords and a Queen of Wands energy. Now, Two of Swords is very much a feeling of having to make an impossible decision. And this is the energy you're coming into this month with, right? And so it could very well be that as a result from the fallout of this split, you're finding yourself having to make a decision in an area of your life. It could be an area to do with your finances and career and also your passion. You may be feeling like, okay, now you're separated. You've broken off this relationship and you're excited to get on with the passionate, creative communi communication and creative endeavors of your life, yet... You may be feeling like you have to still make a choice. It could be a choice between a job, um, 
and going, going, you know, going uh, after your new passion. I feel strongly for some of you, this Ace of Wands could very well be a love interest. But again, I think you're finding yourself right in the beginning, you know, of this January period in a kind of an impossible decision. And I feel like a lot of that is the fallout from this breakup. You know, uh, it could very well be that you've met another person. And again, finances are an issue and you're like hesitant. You're like, wait a minute, you know, from now on, you know, if I do get involved with somebody, you know, it, I don't want my money to be involved as well. Right. Yet you may have met somebody you really, really care for. And so now you're back into this kind of decision space. What do I do? Do I forsake this relationship simply because it has some of the signs of the previous relationship? You know, do I give up on all relationships where money is a factor simply because this one fell apart? And so it does feel very much like an impossible decision. But the thing with Two of Swords is that it's all about balance, right? And so you don't necessarily have to make that impossible decision. There is always a third way, you know, and that third way is balance. A little bit of this, a little bit of that, tempering yourself and trying to find a better way than that sort of black and white decision that you have to make. You come out of this month with a Queen of Wands, which is very much like a self-realization. The Queen of Wands is one of the highest cards for self-transformation, right? And understanding. She's the one who shows up at difficult times. And I love to see her right now for you because this period now, this fallout from this breakup here, this Five of Pentacles breakup, um, there's a lot still that you need to have, you need to go through. There's still going to be some trials and tribulations for you. It's going to take a while for you, even though you may be very excited to start this new life away from whoever this person was, because I do feel that there was a heavy oppression here, right? And you're so happy to be out from under it, but yet it's not like it's going to be an easy ride. You do have the chariot here. And so you're definitely laying the groundwork for a new stage in your life, but it won't be all that easy. And I love it when the queen of wands shows up because this is the queen we want to show up when life is difficult, right? When we have trials and tribulations to go through because she's the strongest. She has already a lot of wisdom underneath her belt experience and she understands the nature of going through difficult times in order to change things about herself that she'd like to change or in order to become more refined to become stronger to become wiser and so we love it when we see the queen of wands showing up especially at a time where you're having to do the hard work of kind of rebuilding yourself you know whether it's financially emotionally or what have you the queen of wands can handle that tough road um and again, I'm going to say, you know, it will be difficult to find balance and she's good for that as well to come in because this two of swords is very interesting that it's showing up because it's like, yes, you've gone through this split. You are very excited to start a new life of creative potential. You know, in the back of your mind that this is, that things are going to be completely different and this new stage of your life is going to be a whole new stage than the one you were in before. This feels very much like the last sort of toxic relationship, you know, the final straw, the straw that broke the camel's back. And I feel it's like almost like a lot of you Tauruses who have gone through this particular scenario, it's like you've learned such a huge lesson. I think you've been here before, perhaps, right? But the lesson wasn't really driven home. This time the lesson was driven home. You know, and it could even be that maybe you even put up with this relationship because the other person was helping you financially. And maybe you said to yourself, you know, um, you know, uh, that you were in love with this person. And part of it was the fact that they were supporting you. And yet the divide still happened. Yet the power dynamic was still very oppressive and still fell apart. And I think that this is also part of the lesson that there. You know, that especially for Taurus, because you're such a hard worker and your create your um, I want to say your abundance and your sort of success, right? The success that you have in your life when it comes to career and business and the things that you do to bring in your financial stability and abundance is so important to you. You know, it's so much a part of who you are. And I think the lesson you learn here very much is that you can't have this and your love too too entwined. You know, you have to have financial autonomy 
from anyone that you're with or else you're not going to be completely comfortable or you're going to be in a power dynamic that will eventually fall apart. I think this is very much a feeling of learning that, that lesson finally, like really, really driving it home. Because not only does the fool indicate a new stage in life, it also indicates a quantum leap in experience and understanding. And the fool also indicates that you've learned something. There was, you've learned the lesson you were supposed to learn from this stage of your life, right? So take that lesson and try to inform this to a source so that you're not thrust into another situation where you're forced to make a decision that you don't necessarily want to make. You know, and instead you choose to find balance. Now, eight and eight, interesting, two eights. Eight of swords and eight of wands. Eight of swords is my great gaslighter card. You know, this is the energy you come into this month with. So I wonder about this, right? Because this is usually someone that we are dealing with who's very toxic. Now, when you are resonating with this energy yourself, eight of swords can be a little bit of a sort of feeling of... Um, and this is interesting why you have the two of swords here. Eight of swords is very much this feeling of, you know, I have no other choice. I'm being forced to make the decisions I'm making, forced to take the action I'm taking. You know, something about uh, this January period, and I think something about this fallout from this re this relationship certainly is making you feel a little bit like you've been, you're the victim. And you may indeed be the victim. Right, you may indeed have gotten a rough ride here, right? But just take very good care because Eight of Swords oftentimes is that trauma we have when we absolutely feel like, yes, we have been the victim of something, but we take the trauma and the baggage of that, that victimization forward, right? And we continue to feel like we're a victim or we continue to play the role of victim, you know? They did this to me, now I'm forced to behave this way, you know? Nobody wants to help me, I'm alienated, you know, this kind of attitude, you know? Um, which can lead into deep toxicity and dysfunction, dysfunction, you know? If you carry on, you can see how alienated and sort of bound this person is. They're unable to make any moves, make any decisions, they're blinded to their own sort of behavior. And so, this is what you come into this month with. And I'm not saying that you're completely, uh, you know, embodying eight of swords but there's a little bit of leftover trauma here that has the potential for turning into some heavy baggage taurus now you're met with the eight of wands which is a lot of mixed signals right a lot of mixed signals a lot of mixed emotions and i think that makes sense because you're not really comfortable in this space you know you're not really comfortable with this energy because you're generally not one of these Taurus, in general, your energy is not one to be the victim. You're usually, you know, the one to sort of like work even triple time, you know, to get out of a situation, you know, and to make the effort. So it's like your world, the energy that's coming back to you is not mirroring, you know, what you believe it to be, right? So the messages you're getting from friends and loved ones and feedback you're getting from the world around you is not it's, it's quite chaotic it's very mixed and it's not uh constant you know it's one time you get one reaction another time you're getting another reaction there can be also a lot of people who may be trying to come into you and give you their two cents which is another reason why you might be feeling a little bit sort of like frozen and unable to move take care to um you know, just take responsibility for whatever this relationship has left you feeling with, you know, like whatever toxicity or whatever baggage this relationship, because I do feel this was quite painful, this last breakup, although it was a lesson, maybe the final lesson you needed. It's not like I said, it didn't come easily. So take care to rebalance yourself, you know, um, and to not adopt too much of this. You could have been with somebody who really tried to gaslight you. The one thing with Eight of Swords is that, you know, this individual is a gaslighter. But they became a gaslighter. And again, you know, if you know what a gaslighter is, is someone who sort of really causes a lot of chaos and a lot of craziness around them. And then they blame everyone else for it. That's it in a nutshell, right? Um... But oftentimes people who resonate with this energy resonate with this energy because that's exactly what was done to them, all right? And so I feel strongly that here, you know, you have a, the, the fallout of this lesson is to not become like the person that you were dealing with in this dynamic. 
And so once you sort of face up to that and sort of like heal yourself from this leftover baggage, which is part of Queen's, Queen of Wands, which is part of that hard work, it will help you to find balance again, right? And then you're, then the feedback that you're getting from the outside world will, con will actually be more consistent and more in line with what you're expecting. I think for a lot of you this January, it's going to, certainly if you're fe resonating with this reading, it's going to feel like your, your energy and the energy that's coming into you is a little bit out of balance, right? And it's not what you're used to because you're used to being able to count on the type of reaction you have because you're a very constant person. You're generally very focused and you're very sort of like, um, you know, intentional about what you're doing, but it just feels very much like sort of leftover energy that really needs to be healed right? Where you really need to do a lot of self healing. You're about to start a new chapter in your life. You don't want to bring any of this negative energy that this person is sort of, or this dynamic has sort of left you with, right? Into this new sort of path. Now the King of Swords is here and this is your position for hopes and dreams and also your position for what you fear the most. And the King of Swords is very strict, you know? He's very domineering. He's a great rule maker. He's a great disciplinarian. He comes in, he requires absolute honesty of those around him, right? And, uh, and a lot of times, of course, the King of Swords is, is the fiery aspect of air. And so you're really sort of wanting to be clear headed. You know, the King of Swords is very logical, very clear headed, very business like, you know, and he's, and, and, and in a sense of, you know, cross the T's, dot the I's, you know, he talks about author being an authoritative figure, right? Um, and certainly setting down, setting the ground rules. And I think that this is what you want to have in your love life going forward. Yet at the same time, you don't want to be too restrictive, right? You, you're feeling like, you know, a lot of you, certainly if you're resonating with this leftover energy from this relationship, you're feeling like you don't want to swing too far either way. Right? You don't want to swing the one way where you're too restrictive, too sort of uh, harsh about relationships, too sort of unwielding and, un, you know, unable to sort of open up your heart again, you know, just being very, very um, black and white and down to the letter. Yet, at the other, on the other hand, you require that to sort of get some balance here back, right? Because for a little while, you may be feeling a little bit sort of out of whack with your energy, right? And so the king of swords, the best bet with him is always to be honest. And I think what we're talking about here is certainly to be honest with yourself. You know, you have to be honest with yourself oftentimes, especially when you're going through the trauma of a relationship that's broken up, that left you with five pentacles. You know, five pentacles is harsh. You know, having to pay that financial price, you know, being split from someone that you trusted, right? That you cared for a relationship, right? And really being alienated. It could be that you lost some friends during this process. You're, you're alienated from a certain friendship group. And it does feel like it's going to take some time in January to get your feet again. But you will, Taurus. Because you are a very strong sign in that way. And the best thing for you to do is to be for a short, in this short period where you are healing yourself. You may not be trusting your, your decision making process right now while you're healing. It's to just remain extremely honest with yourself and with those around you. Certainly if a new relationship is coming in or the possibility of a new relationship is coming in and it's worrying you, you're feeling like you have an impossible, impossible decision to make. Again, the King of Swords is really what you want also. Not only do you want the Queen of Wands to be able to handle this because she's the one who's going to handle this aspect of you. The Queen of Wands aspect of you is the one who's going to make it through all of this better, stronger, wiser, but also you require the king of swords, honesty, right? You require that honesty. You require that sort of, uh, you know, tough love almost, you know, giving yourself a little bit of that tough love, you know, you round the uh, January period off with a four of swords. And so this is being very sort of thoughtful and strategic. And I'm going to say by the end of the month, you are well on your way to this new life with the chariot and full energy. However, you are being very careful now. You know, I think you, by the end of this month, 
uh, those of you who are going through this, you will have done quite a lot of healing, quite a lot of soul searching, and you're going to be extremely careful moving forward because Four of Swords is all about maintaining your stability and sort of making the right decisions to maintain your stability and being careful about the decisions you're making in your love life, being careful about the type of people you're allowing in, right? Um, because you're going to be learning so much about yourself this month. This is a huge learning curve for you, uh, Taurus. Um, because you're, you're learning a lesson and you're also learning something about yourself, which is how to heal when you have taken on a little bit of uh, dysfunctionality or taken on a little bit of toxicity or baggage, right, from whatever relationship that you are in. You know, when we are in bad relationships or unhappy relationships or relationships that really end painfully, you know, it's not... It's almost impossible to come out of it unscathed. And so I want you to understand that I'm not sort of uh, accusing you of being the toxic one in a relationship, but anyone who's in a bad toxic relationship or a difficult relationship that ends like this, which is very really painful, this feels like a real stab in the back, right? There's going to be some baggage. And so this month is a huge learning period for you, Taurus. A huge wake-up call about the type of relationships you want to have. And I have very faith in you because certainly by the end of the month, you know which way you want to move. You know how you want to go forward. And you are this whole month, you have high priestess energy crossing you. And this is what I mean. This is, oh, don't worry about my cat in the background. Um, this is a huge sort of spiritual lesson in a lot of ways for you, you know, because you're about to start a huge and a whole new path in your life. You know, and a whole new path in love as well. A whole new way of loving or interacting with people and relationships. And so this is a big month to sort of, you know, get rid of any baggage. Get rid of your demons. Work through any leftover issues from this last relationship. And really sort of find yourself and self-realize, you know, where you're at now. Let's get some clarity and then we're going to call this your January reading. Big lessons to learn this month. Big sort of experience to gain um, in the area of love, in the area of the type of relationships you want and how you want to be in them. Prince of Swords, there you have it. There's your High Priestess again. Wow. The moon, it's a test. This is exactly what I felt. And there's your Ace of Swords. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. This is a very testing period for you. This month with that moon coming out at the bottom of the deck, we have the Magician. So, of course, you have everything you need to get through this time. And this is why I say I have all the faith in the world in you, Taurus. Don't, you know, this is not to say that, you know, you're going to come out of this badly. You're going to come out of this great, but it is a big testing phase for you. Prince of Swords in the Thoth deck is the same as the uh, Knight of Swords, Okay. So the Knight of Swords here is talking about sort of cutting away obstacles to your happiness, cutting away mental obstacles. Again, some of the mental baggage that you may have accumulated from this relationship could be an obstacle to your future. And this is why this January period is going to be a huge healing month for you, a need for healing and doing some shadow work. Because Ace of Wands definitely indicates that there is an opportunity for you to follow your passions the right way, right? But there are obstacles, and these obstacles are sword obstacles, so mental, communication, and again, working through them. High Priestess comes out over the Fool. So you know already in your heart of hearts what you need to do, Tars. You know that you need to heal. You know that you need to really sort of find yourself a little bit this month, right? And come out and come through this, right? You have to go through it almost to come out of it, of course, right? It's a beautiful High Priestess card. And certainly the beginning of a new life for you, I think a new stage in your life where you're going to be thinking about things a little bit more from that intuitional side of yourself. Because again, a lot of you saw this coming, High Priestess tells you, you knew this was going to happen, but somewhere along the line, it's like you, 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 it's like you stepped outside of yourself and you just watched yourself in this situation carrying on with this, with this dynamic, even though you knew how, you know, in your heart of hearts, you knew how it would end. Two of Swords and the Moon. So like I say, this is a testing period for you to see, are you going to make 
the same type of decisions that you made before, right? Are you going to, you know, and that's why the moon is a testing phase because we're not given all the answers sometimes, you know, and sometimes we're just given the same scenario over and over and we're tested to see, are we going to continue to use the same sort of behavior patterns or modes of interacting with people or are we going to adjust because we realize that somewhere along the line our own sort of input has had something to do with this toxic energy here right choosing for it or choosing to stay in it or whatever it is for your case so this is very much a period january of testing how are you going to go forward how are you going to make your decisions henceforth now that you learned what you've learned and now that you've learned as well about yourself how you're able to sort of um, how you've adopted some of the baggage, right? And so this is knowing yourself also. Remember, eight is a number for strength and uh, a strength card in Major Arcana, which is associated with Leo. But it's also, you know, strength is all about knowing who you are, knowing your strengths and knowing your weaknesses as well. And so this is also a period where you really need to, you're learning, you know, and you're needing to sort of go through this to learn and to accept where you are strong and where you are not so strong and how to adjust the way you live your life and the way you get into relationships so that you don't repeat this cycle. Ace of Swords comes in over that Queen of Wands. And I think, like I said, by the end of the month, you come out radiant, having learned your lesson in a lot of ways, having gained a lot of experience and more so experience of who you are how you respond in certain types of scenarios and certain types of relationships and learning for yourself what kind of relationships play to your strengths and what kind of relationships ultimately play to your weaknesses. And you have an ace of swords, which is clarity comes in, understanding comes in, you know. An example is that, like, you know, if you... Here's a, an example. I'm not saying you're going through this, Taurus, but this is what... Here's an example of what I mean. If you know that, for instance, if you... um if you've had a, a, a bout with, uh, let, let's say you've had a period in your life where you were addicted to alcohol, right? You had a, you know, or you have, you come from a family where alcoholism runs in your family, right? You know that if you get involved with somebody who's a hardcore alcoholic, that this is not good for you, right? You know that this is not good for you. And yet, Maybe you're drawn to those type of people, or maybe you're drawn to relationships, or maybe one in every few relationships that person is an alcoholic, but you haven't accepted the fact that this is not a good connection for you. This is not a healthy connection for you, and ultimately, it's going to leave you weaker, right? Then this is a lesson that we learn about ourselves, and this is what I mean by the number eight with strength. Strength is understanding your strengths and weaknesses and playing to those strengths and staying away from things that play to your weaknesses, right? We all have them. And so this is what I'm talking about in terms of understanding for yourself this testing period coming in to learn and understand, you know, what you need to remain strong, what kind of people you need to be around, what kind of relationships you need to be around, right? And how to let go of any sort of toxicity or any sort of dysfunction or sort of bad behaviors that you've adopted being around the wrong type of people or the wrong type of relationship. And through all of this, the clarity will come in by the end of the month um, with this queen of wands, right? The experience, you'll resonate higher with your experience and understanding, but certainly clarity is going to come in. And this clarity, Ace of Swords, is a vindication because it's a clarity on who you are and what it is you need to be uh, happy in love. All right, guys, I'm going to call it. This is your reading for January. Love, Taurus. Happy month for you. A lot of lessons to be learned. Um, but I think it's going to be a wonderful month because overall you have the magician and the chariot, which means you're about to start a whole new path in your life and you have everything that you need to succeed, but you just need to go through this little period now, this January period of healing yourself, right? Learning more about yourself, going deeper, right? Uh, and taking those lessons forward. All right, guys, please like, subscribe, and share if you enjoyed this video. Leave me comments. Check out your other readings in the description. They are linked there. If you want to get a private reading, you can follow the links at the top of your screen, or you can go and uh, order a tarot answers 
uh, video. It's a 10 minute answer to one of your questions, uh, which is usually turned around the same day. But for right now, Taurus, have a wonderful January. I really wish you all the best. It's going to be a tough month for you, but the high priestess is there for you. You already know where you're going through, so trust your gut. All right, guys. See you middle month for the mid-month love check-in. Bye-bye now.